Hi, and uh, welcome to the opening of the 29th and 30th booster pack from the Icoria booster box. And of course, the two extra booster packs, one from Throne of Eldraine and one from Theros of Beyond. So let's get into it here. Get the two packs out here. And of course, the Theros. All right, let's get the packs out of the way. And again, I think we're going to mix it up a bit. So I think we're going to do it this way this time. So it's going to be the Ikoria, Throne of Eldraine, Ikoria, and Theros as the last pack. Okay, so let's see what we have. Oh, oops. And get that opened nice and smoothly like. All right. The first common card that we have from the Ikoria pack is the Whisper Squad. So it is a common black creature, a human soldier that costs one black to cast and is a 1-1. One, one. And it says for one and a black, search your library for a card named Whisper Squad put it into the battlefield tab, then shuffle your library. So this could be pretty cool for standard, I think. <clears throat> All right, let's just put that there. All right, then we have the Humble nature Naturalist. So it is a green common creature, a human druid, that costs one and a green to cast. It's a one three, and if you tap it, uh, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast creature spells. So great for getting out the creatures for that one. Then we have, oh, one of my favorite artworks of this set, the Of One Mind. So it's a blue common sorcery, uh, it costs two and a blue to cast, and it says this spell costs two less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature. And you can draw two cards for this. So as you can see, I really do like the artwork on that one. I think it's beautiful blue color. Oh, very nice. And then we have the Ferocious Tigerilla. So one of the fun cards here. It is a common red creature, a cat ape that costs three and a red to cast. It's a four three and it says Ti ferocious tigerilla enters the battlefield with your choice of a trample counter or a menace counter on it. Then we have the spontaneous flight. So it is a white common instant that costs two and a white to cast. And it says target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn and you get to put a flying counter on it as well. Then we have a black common uh, instant, the corpse churn. So it costs one and a black to cast and it says put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Then we have a mysterious egg. So this is a egg, a creature colorless, cost one mana to cast. It's a zero two creature. And it says whenever this creature mutates, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then we have the Day Squad Marshal, a white common creature, a human soldier that costs three and a white to cast. And it says when Day Squad Marshal enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So, and it's a 3-3 three, three creature itself. And then we have a red common sorcery we have the Blazing Volley. So it costs one red to cast and it says Blazing Volley deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. So great for 
taking out some token creatures or something like that. Then we have the flame spill, a uncommon red instant that caused one, uh, oh, sorry, two and a red to cast. And it says flame spill deals four damage to target creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. So kind of a trample like damage there. And then we have a blue uncommon. We have the human wizard, a blue uh, creature that costs two and a blue to cast. It's a one three. And it says when wingspan mentor enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control. For two and a blue and tapping wingspan mentor, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. So great to ramp up those flying decks. And then we have a white common creature, a bird goat, the storm wild Capridor. So it's a 1-3, it costs 2 and a white to cast, and it has flying, and it says if non-combat damage would be dealt to Stormwind Capridor, prevent that damage. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Stormwild Capridor for each 1 damage pre prevented this way. So you could actually kind of ramp it by dealing damage which isn't combat damage to this pretty fast pretty cool oh and then we have a triome so we have the sagoth triome a rare land that is a swamp a forest and an island and it also says that the triome enters the battlefield tapped and it has cycling for three Then we have a land, a normal plains. Oh, and then we have a foil. So we have a red common um, sorcery, uh, go for blood, that caused one and a red to cast. And it says target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. And it has cycling for one. And it has some, oh, some pretty cool foiling actually there where they're only accentuating some of the details of the card that's pretty nice pretty cool actually very nice all right and then we have a human soldier token all right let's get into the throne of eldraine pack let's see if we get anything good There we go. All right, first card from Throne of Eldraine. So the first card is a common black sorcery, the Forever Young, and cost one and a black to cast and says, put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and you get to draw a card. Pretty nice. I think we'll put it down here and then put Theros in between there. Yeah. And uh, then we have a red common instant. We have the barge in. Cost one red to cast and it says target attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains trample until end of turn. All right, cool. Then we have a white common enchantment aura. We have trapped in the tower. It costs one and one white to cast. And it says enchant creature without flying. So enchanted creature can't attack or block and its activated abilities is it can't be activated. So it's kind of neutralizing a non-flying creature. Then we have a uh, black common sorcery. Uh, we have the foreboding fruit. 
So it costs two and a black to cast and it says target player draws two cards and loses two life and it has uh, adamant. So it says if at least three black mana was spent to cast this spell, create a food token as well. And we have a green common instant. We have the fell the pheasant. So it's uh, a green instant, of course. Uh, it costs one and a green to cast, and it says fell the pheasant deals five damage to target creature with flying, and you get to create a food token. And then we have the witching well. So this is a blue artifact that costs one blue to cast. And it says when Witching Will enters the battlefield, you can scry two. And for three and a blue, sacrifice Witching Will and you can draw two cards. Then we have the Addenvale Paladin. So this is a white common creature, a human knight. And for three and a white, you get a two five creature that has adamant and says as if at least three white mana was spent to cast this spell, Ardenvale Paladin enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Then we have the jousting dummy. <clears throat> Oh, it's a common artifact creature, a Scarecrow Knight. Costs 2 to cast, it's a 2-1, and for 3 mana, Jousting Dummy gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. So a great little boost card there. Then we have the red common sorcery, Blow Your House Down. So it costs two and a red to cast, and it says up to three target creatures can't block this turn, destroy any of them that are walls. So kind of get to blow down some walls with this card. And then we have the Wolf's Query. So it's a green common sorcery that costs four and two green to cast, and it says create three, one, one, Green boar creature tokens with when this creature dies, create a food token on it. So that's pretty cool to get out some blockers. <clears throat> and then when they die, or if they die, then get some food tokens as well. Then we have the uh, Spectre's Shriek, a black uncommon sorcery cost one black to cast and it says target opponent reveals their hand you may choose a non-land card from it if you do that player exiles that card if a non-black card was is exiled its way exile a card from your hand and then we have a grum gully the generous so it's a, a uncommon multicolor legendary creature, a goblin shaman, cost one and a red and a green to cast. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three creature and it says each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So pretty cool. Then we have the black uncommon sorcery epic downfall so it costs one and a black to cast and it says exile target creature with converted mana cost great uh, three or greater so pretty cool artwork there as well on that one kind of kind of looks like a, a little bit like the ikoria inspired with the uh, dragon and stuff And then for the rare, we have a green common, uh, oh, not a green common, a green rare, uh, the Wild Bond Preserver. It's a creature, a elf archer, that cost one and a uh, green to cast. It's a 2-2 two -two creature that has flash and reach. And it says whenever another 
another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X, where when you do, put X plus one plus one counters on Wildborn Preserver. So you can get to boost this pretty fast, actually. Very nice. And then we have a forest and a human cleric token. Okay, let's get into the Ikoria. So this is the 30th pack from the box of Ikoria boosters. And let's see what we have in this one. All right. So the first one is the maimed serval, a white common creature, a cat. That's a 1-4, it has vigilance, and it costs one and a white to cast. Then we have the mutual destruction. So it's a, a black common sorcery that costs one black to cast. And it says this spell has flash as long as you control a permanent with flash. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature and you get to destroy target creature. Then we have the Moss Code Goriak, a green common creature, a beast that costs two and a green to cast. It has vigilance and it is a two four creature. Then we have Capture Sphere, a blue common enchantment aura that costs three and a blue to cast. It has flash enchant creature and says when capture sphere enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. And it says enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So again, a good way to neutralize a creature with that. And then again, we have the ferocious tigerella. So the second one this turn or this stream and then we have the white common creature a dinosaur the imposing vantasaur so it's a five it's a three six creature with vigilance cost five and a white to cast and it also has cycling for one then we have a blue instant we have the hampering snare so it costs one and a blue to cast and it says creatures your opponent's control get minus two minus zero until end of turn and it has cycling for two then we have a green common sorcery we we have the survivor's bond so it costs one and a green to cast and you can choose one or both return target human creature card from your graveyard to your hand and or return target non-human creature uh, card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you both have human creatures and non-human creatures, you get two creatures back from your graveyard. And then we have the white common creature, the fox bird Volpikeet. So it's a 2-3, it costs 3 and a white to cast, it has mutate for 2 and a white, and it has flying, and it says whenever this creature mutates, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then for the uncommons, we have a multicolor instant, the Zenith Flare that costs two and a red and a white to cast. And it says Zenith Flare deals X damage to any target and you g gain X life, where X is the number of cards with a cycling ability in your graveyard. So again, pretty cool card for those cycling decks. Then we have the Sagoth Mamba. So it's a uh, uncommon, a black creature, it's a nightmare snake that's a 1 1 and cost 1 black to cast. And it says whenever this creature mutates, target creature your opponent controls gets uh, minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn. 
So pretty cool for a mutate deck. Then we have a uncommon green instant, the Barrier Breach. It costs two and a green to cast, and it says exile up to three target enchantments, and it has cycling for two. And then for the rare, we have a rare a multicolor creature, a cat beast, the Frontland Felidar. So it costs two and a green and a white to cast. It's a 3-5 with Vigilance. And it says creatures you control with Vigilance has the ability one and tap it, tap target creature. Pretty nice. Then we have a Rugged Highlands, just a common land there. I think I done that a couple of times. Ooh, and then we have a foil land, a foil forest. So again, I do like the foiling on this particular set because they are only accentuating certain details on the cards. That is very, very cool. All right, so let's just, oh, let's put the foil there. And then we have a human token human soldier token okay so the last pack will be the Theros beyond death and let's see what we have in this last pack of the stream all right so let's see what we have here the first one is a black common sorcery the fruit of Tisserus? Tisserus. I think Tisserus. Uh, it's a black common sorcery that costs one black to cast, and it says target player loses two life, and it has escape for three and a black, and it says exile three other cards from your graveyard for the escape value. The cost. There. Oh, just push that in there. There we go. Then we have a green common instant. We have return to nature. So it's a, a green instant that caused one and a green to cast. And it says choose one, either destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment or um, exile target a card from a graveyard. Then we have the Karamitra's Blessing. Karamitra's Blessing? Blessing, I think? Yeah. Uh, it's a white common instant that costs one white to cast, and it says target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Pretty cool effects there. Then we have a black common creature. We have the Rage Scarred Berserker. So it's, it's a Minotaur Berserker that costs four and a black to cast. It's a 5-4 creature. And it says when Rage Scarred Berserker enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus one plus zero and gains indestructible until end of turn. Then we have a white common sorcery. We have revoke existence. So it's caused one and a white to cast and it says exile target artifact or enchantment. And then we have a black common enchantment or the aspect of lamprey. So it Cost three and a black to cast, and it says enchant creature you control. When aspect of lamprey enters the battlefield, target opponent discards two cards. Enchanted creature has lifelink. Then we have a blue common instant. 
we have stern dis dismissal. Stern dismissal. Oh, that's actually pretty cool artwork on that. Uh, so it costs one blue to cast, and it says return target creature or enchantment an opponent controls to its owner's hand. Oh, and if you can't see it properly, I'll just zoom in a bit here. Pretty cool artwork on that one, actually, as well. So, then we have a Infuriate. So, it's a red common instant um, that costs one red to cast, and it says target creature gets plus three, plus two until end of turn. So, pretty good boost card there. Then we have the Scholar Grove Dancer, a green common enchantment creature, a Seder Druid, and it costs one and a green to cast. It's a 2-2, two, two, and it says whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, uh, you gain one life. And for a two and a green, it says put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Then we have a, another common, this time it's a white common enchantment creature, a S Senator Scout. It's the Nyxborn Corsair. So it costs one and two white to cast, and it's a two four creature. And then for the uncommons, we have the first one, which is a black uncommon sorcery. Uh, the Agonizing Remorse. So it costs one and a black to cast, and it says target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land uh, card from it, or a card from their graveyard, exile that card, you lose one life. Then we have a, ooh, a, that's actually pretty cool. Um, then we have a, a black uncommon uh, enchantment creature, a demon, uh, the enemy of, of enlightenment. So it, it's a 5-5 five, five flying that caused 5 and a black to cast, and it says enemy of enlightenment gets minus 1, minus 1 for each card in your opponent's hands. Oh my god. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, each card, each player discards a card. So this could actually, if you cast this in the wrong time, this could actually pretty much kill it uh, if you're playing multiplayer <laughs> right away. So pretty much for a one-on-one -on -one battle, I guess. Okay, and then we have a another uncommon. This time it's a blue uncommon enchantment saga. The Meadow Maze uh, Prophecy that caused one and a blue to cast, and the first of the sagas is scry one, the second is choose a card name, the third is when you cast a spell with the chosen name for the first time, this turn draw two cards, and the fourth is look at the top card of each player's library. So a little lurking ability there. Ooh, and then we have the Nyx Lotus. So a rare legendary artifact that costs four to cast, and it says Nyx Lotus enters the battlefield tapped, choose a color, or, oh, tapping it, choose a color, add an amount of mana of that color equal to your, to, to your devotion to that color. So you pretty much can double up on your mana uh, for a certain color with this um, card. So very cool. And then we have an island and a tentacle token. So a creature token from tentacle. I do love the, uh, the um, islands and the, uh, the mana from, uh, from throne. Oh, from uh, from um, Theros, of course. Okay, so this was the contents of the 29th and 30th 
pack, booster pack from the Icoria booster box, plus an extra pack from a bundle of Throne of Eldraine, and a extra pack of Theros Beyond Death from a bundle pack as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Uh, if you have any comments for me, please leave a comment. Um, if you are interested in upcoming streams, please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell. Um, and uh, until next time, please stay safe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.